Андрей, скажи, пожалуйста, вот объясни, что если мы говорим, что у нас не должно быть такого финансового состояния здоровья, а мы сейчас понимаем, что это не так. Да, я понимаю, но мы у вас, смотрите, как бы все, что это получится, это английский. ТПС там все прописано. ТПС, все, ребят, все. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Hello, colleagues. Merhaba. Uh, we are happy to welcome you to our conference, dedicate online conference, Russia-Turkey, dedicated to shipbuilding, the international cooperation in shipbuilding. On behalf of the organizers of the conference, I would like to thank you uh, for the Ministry of Industry and Um, we are happy to welcome you the St. Petersburg Center for support of uh, uh, shipbuilding, the Turkish Association of Shipbuilders, and uh, please be on the English channel. I'm here on the English channel, yes, that's, that's, that's fine. So let me continue. We also rep thank the Association of Shipbuilding and special thanks to our partner, the Turkish Reading. Dear colleagues, before we start, I would like to make a technical uh, message. If you want to listen to interpretation, please push the button translation below on the screen and and you please just switch english and you can ask your questions in the chat of technical issues or to speakers so please ask our moderator to do that and now i would like to give a floor to a moderator of our conference dean of saint petersburg uh, maritime technical university Professor Oleg Timofeev, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Hello, colleagues, dear friends. Um, it's a pleasure for me to um, cooperation on Russian Federation and Turkish Republic on shipbuilding organized by Neva International under the support of St. Petersburg Experts Center under the government of St. Petersburg. Merhaba. This is an online conference and this is because of the pandemic. However, this mode has its advantages. It allows to attract more people, uh, smaller and medium enterprises. Uh, they have a chance to submit their presentations. The turnover between Russia and Turkey in shipbuilding has been growing over the last two decades. However, the previous year uh, showed the trend to reduce uh, orders uh, from Russia, because this is uh, only natural. The more details on potential and uh, vistas would be uh, presented by the representative of the industry, Ministry of Industry and Trade. This conference is to um, exchange views between um, professional associations as well as smaller, medium and major companies that um, specialize in shipbuilding support and production of shipboard equipment. We have potential for mutual growth by making um, joint intellectual and other types of products. I wish members of the conference all the best to um, 
uh, all the best of your cooperation. So, uh, as you uh, let's start our conference. The speakers uh, have five minutes for the first session, and the first speaker in the first session is a representative of the Ministry of Industry and Trade of Russia, Shipbuilding and Marine uh, Equipment, Ilya Popolev. Hello, Ilya, the floor is yours. I cannot hear the speaker, unfortunately. This is interpreter speaking. Ilya, could you please unmute your mic? Hello, colleagues. Uh, merhaba. How can you hear me? Fine. Uh, can you hear me, colleagues? It's fine for us. That's that's fine. We can hear you. We can hear you and see. Uh, hello, colleagues. On behalf of the uh, shipbuilding department and marine equipment of the Ministry of Industry and Trade of Russia, and on my personal behalf, I would like to welcome the participants of the online conference Russia-Turkey, potential for shipbuilding cooperation. I'm thanking Neva International company, St. Petersburg Expert Center, for organizing of a such high-profile conference for the industry as well, for this opportunity to discuss uh, key items for our country's cooperation in civil shipbuilding. First and foremost, I would like to say that Turkey has been and is a big Russian trade partner. Back in 2020, there is 100 year anniversary of our diplomatic relations. Turkey is among top 10 countries, uh, biggest countries of uh, trade turnover with Russia. But at the same time, the reduction of the world uh, trade due to pandemic has impacted our economic relations. Uh, back in 2020 versus 2019, the turnover between Russia and Turkey reduced by 20% to 20.8 million, sorry, billion dollars. The experts of ships um, sunken 50% from 80 to 40 million dollars. The imports from 250 to 121 million dollars. It's pretty clear that the shipbuilding industry is the area of economy that has potential not only for getting back on track and for increase further going forward, apart from um, orders to um, orders of radio ships, Russian Turkish cooperation has vistas in marine and ship borne equipment, given the priorities of Russian economy modernization. To achieve those goals and such cooperation, it is worthwhile to deliver a few items like organizing and development in our country's production of ship borne equipment that would that had good potential at foreign markets transfer of technology because joint work with our turkish colleagues is useful and has been worked out already to organize a commercial supply of ships and maritime equipment inclusion into that shipbuilding chain the marine equipment and shipboarding equipment producers from russia and turkey to have a joint production of smart, high-tech equipment. Of course, the biggest uh, growth points uh, beyond commerce is non-commodities experts and the deep commercial, sorry, deep industrial cooperation. We can see bright vistas for our cooperation in the future. Basically, the Russian shipbuilding market in 2020 has increased in price significantly by 65 percent the major orders in russia were ice-breaking fleet including uh Ar the Ar arctic or arctica um, 60 megawatt uh, icebreaker victor chernamirin diesel uh, icebreaker 25 megawatt and another big project delivered by zvezda or star um, shipbuilding yard. This is Vladimir Monomak, uh, Afromax tanker, 114 
2010. The civil shipbuilding industry is uh, for bulk carriers. They are leading the way. 17 items, 13 barges have been built and special fleet uh, also 13. Before 2030, Russia is going to uh, deliver a large tonnage uh, ice breaking and fishing fleet, including the potential fleet of uh, before 2035. The uh, goal is to build 1,000 uh, ships in Russia in total. However, at the same time, there is cooperation with Turkish shipyards. In 2020, the uh, Kuzey Star shipyard in Turkey, the big major ferry, Marshal Rokossovsky, was commissioned, uh, running on a liquefied uh, petroleum gas for Ustluga, Baltisk ferry line. That project is a cooperation between the Nevsky shipbuilding and repair plant. The Turkish um, Yersan shipyard on the 12th of June 2020, the first super trawler was uh, commissioned for o Okean Replot of Kamchatka, which is a unique ship unsurpassed in the world so far. This is a good project set up by Okean Replot with a Norway company, Steep Technic. I hope that the Russian and Turkish uh, companies would continue win-win cooperation. We have all the makings for that. And I can tell you that the Ministry of Industry and Trade and Department of Shipbuilding of the Ministry has always been open for cooperation and is ready to foster commercial cooperation between our countries. Teşekkür ederim. Thank you very much for cooperation and I wish you all the best for our countries. Thank you, Ilya Vasilievich. Thank you very much indeed. Our next speaker is Aydar Gashigulin, a trade representative of the Russian Federation in the Republic of Turkey. The floor is yours, Aydar. Hello, colleagues. Uh, we are happy to welcome you from Ankara, my wholehearted uh, regards from the Russian trade representation in Turkey and uh, thank you for letting us uh, participating in the conference today which is a good uh, continuation of the present Russian Turkish group for ship building and uh, uh, the Russian Turkey Commission we think the uh, industrial cooperations like that for government and from business circles, well, we'll continue our mutual cooperation and will let us find new ideas for joint projects. Ideally, we have to consider those things together, but online format is also not too bad. And this is a good thing for Turkish Turkish companies. In the last years, our cooperation between our countries in the shipbuilding has been pretty active. And as Ilya Vasilievich has mentioned, we have delivered joint projects um, on super trawlers, ferries, and uh, other marine equipment. The Turkish equipment in shipbuilding is um, very demonstrative. We have uh, experts and uh, we also have to think that in uh, Russia, we have uh, traditions for special purpose uh, floating equipment and uh, annually the experts has been growing for our shipbuilding industry, including the strategy of the shipbuilding industry development in Russia before 2035. Given that, the cooperation between Russian and Turkish shipbuilders has a bigger, much bigger potential and takes closer cooperation. Apart from uh, shipbuilding, we also consider the um, bilateral project in uh, research vessels 
uh, spare parts for repair and maintenance, construction and upgrade of Russian-Turkish shipyards, joint cooperation in special economic seaport zones, as well as monitoring of uh, marine pollution and equipment for cleaning pollution. Therefore, we suggest that we should consider an opportunity of a bilateral Russian-Turkish forum in 2020, sorry, 2021, for shipbuilding, yacht building, for spare parts to be organized under the international conference NEVA International exhibition. We are happy to be part of that conference and to foster cooperation both to Turkish to Russian companies and organizations. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good work. Большое спасибо, Айдар Аюпович. Следующее слово предоставляется Денису Борисовичу Кузьмину, заместителю генерального директора Центра судостроения и судоремонта, представителю Ассоциации судостроителей Санкт-Петербурга и Ленинградской области. Денис Васильевич Кузьмин, representative of Association of Shipbuilders of St. Petersburg and Leningrad region. Thank you for this opportunity, dear colleagues organizers of the conference i would like to thank you for this opportunity to represent the association of shipbuilders of uh, st petersburg and Leningrad region this is the region which is traditionally the center of uh, shipbuilding of russian federation our association is a multi-purpose complex and shipbuilding here is able to provide the full cycle of designing and construction of commercial vessels and naval ships. The association itself was established in 1992 and currently it is uniting 38 companies of shipbuilding industry of St. Petersburg and Leningrad region. The basis of this foundation are the shipbuilding uh, companies, dockyards, producing the ships, as well as design bureaus, scientific research institutes, uh, universities responsible for training, education of personnel for this industry. This association also includes the equipment producing companies, which were united in corporation currently, recently, and it is ensuring provision of equipment, electric mounting works, for ships and vessels constructed in our shipyards. So they provide the full cycle. The association is presented by such famous in Russia and abroad companies as, for example, two state scientific research centers, Krylov Research Center and the Center of Shipbuilding and Ship Repair that I represent, as well as famous shipyards, Admiralty Dockyard, Northern Dockyard, famous design bureaus, Rubin and Malahit, as well as companies of region, Pella, Viborg Shipyard, naval equipment producing companies, for example, Aurora, scientific production company. Our association also, uh, the member of our association is St. Petersburg Marine University, considering the variety of our activities. Uh, the companies of St. Petersburg and Leningrad region provide uh, huge manufacturing capacities as well as the potential for scientific research activity and I'm sure we have good conditions for mutually beneficial cooperation, cooperation between Russian and Turkish companies. This year, apart from offline, online meetings, we will have a chance to participate in the online events, uh, the Maritime Show and the Niva Exhibition, International Exhibition of this year. So I wish you the fruitful work. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Denis Borisovich. Now we would like to give the floor to Yekaterina Artushenkova, Acting Director General of St. Petersburg Export Support Center, non-commercial organization, 
Ekaterina, the floor is yours. Thank you. On behalf of St. Petersburg, of St. Petersburg Expert Support Center, I would like to welcome all participants of today's event. Our center is responsible for state support of expert activities in St. Petersburg. Most of the services are provided free of charge and uh, they are focusing on small and average uh, size business, but some of our opportunities might be useful for large business companies. Uh, and uh, we support companies at any level of expert activities. We support new companies who just plan to start their expert activities as well as uh, already acting uh, expert companies who want to expand their geography. Part of our organization uh, the participation of our um, organization in this conference is important because uh, this uh, shipbuilding uh, industry is one of the strategic activities of our region. It is related to our geographical position and, of course, there are historical reasons for this. Of course, we are interested in cooperation with the uh, Turkish companies and we hope to mutually interact with international companies and this is the focus of our today's attention. I would like to wish uh, fruitful work uh, all participants of this conference. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Ekaterina. Now we would like to move on to the speeches of Turkish representatives at our first conference, and we would like to give the floor to Mr. Selim Ozoy, who is the expert of Turkish Ship and Yacht and Marine Services Experts Association, please. Uh, Mr. Yosoy, the floor is yours. I'm sorry, Mrs. Yosoy. Wait a minute, please. I'm sorry. Hi. First of all, I'm glad to be here with you at this platform. Now I have to wear a mask because uh, I work with my colleagues in the office now. My name is Selim Osoy. I'm working for Turkish Shipyard and Marine Services Exporters Association. Uh, I would like to introduce you the organization. Uh, could you see the slides, our presentation on screen now? Yes, yes, it's okay. Okay, okay. I will start. Turkish Shipyard and Marine Services Exporters Association represents exportation part of our country's shipyard and sub industry sectors. All the exporters in this sector are our members, and as of today, it has over 1,200 members. 84 of the members are active shipyards. Other member companies work in the sub-industry and supply areas. And our mission, aim of Turkish Shipyard and Marine Services Exporters Association can be defined as enhancing export capacity and performance of the sector and supporting its member companies for better commercial relations in foreign trade. And the other one is making the Turkish shipyards and marine services sector an internationally known trademark. And the last one is to ensure that the sector reach its export potential. All you know that Turkey is a natural bridge between Asia and Europe. It has coasts on Mediterranean, Aegean and the Black Sea. Turkish shipbuilding mastery is the result of more than 700 years' experience. At the screen, you can see the two main areas in Turkey. One of them is Tuzla and the other one is Yalova. Mainly, Turkish ship and yacht construction happens at these two main areas. Today, Turkish shipyards and sub-industry firms export their products to 157 different countries. With numbers, Turkish shipbuilding industry has 700,000 tons of steel processing and 4.65 million delve ton shipbuilding capacity. Looking at the repair and maintenance capacity of the Turkish shipyards, we realize a capacity of 25 million delve ton. According to our exportation numbers, in last three years, $3 billion million of exports have been made. $156 million of total exports have been made to Russia. In 2020, Tarsan shipyard exported 
a fishing ship to Russia. In recent years, there is no major ship export from Russia to uh, Turkey to Russia except that. However, we hope an increase at Turkey's exportation to Russia with our ongoing projects, projects at shipyards and with future delivery of new orders. Ships produced in Turkey and exported to 157 countries are ferries, you can see the screen, energy ships, tugboats, platform supply vessels, naval ships and coast guard boats, mega yachts and yachts, fishing vessels, oil tankers, chemical tankers, bulk carriers and containers, heavy lifting ships, and multi-purpose vessels. I want to show you some examples of innovative and environmentally friendly projects from Turkey. The world's first LNG-powered export tug and the world's first remotely operated commercial vessel. Trailer ferry hybrid. Battery gas powered hybrid Roro passenger vehicle ferry. Hybrid powered Roro passenger vehicle ferry. Anchor handler tug supply vessel. Factory freezer trawler delivered to Russia. Crab catcher. Another ship delivered to Russia. The world's first battery LNG field first signer traveler. Factory freezer, storm traveler under construction for Russia. World's large fleet fish carrier, offshore vessels, fishing vessels, bulk carrier, and naval ships. Our presentation ends now during this session. Turkish Shipbuilders Association and other Turkish shipyards are going to make their representations presentations. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much, Mrs. Céline. Now we would like to give the floor to Mr. Mehtab Ozdemir, Secretary General of Turkish Shipbuilders Association. Please. Apologize, Mrs. Mehtab. I hope you can hear me. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you can uh, see my presentation. Some parts are the application because Selin has already stated. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to give brief information about Turkish shipbuilding industry and Turkish Shipbuilders Association. As you can see, we are one of the oldest non-governmental organizations in Turkey. We have founded in 1971 and currently we have 94 members. All of them are shipyards and yacht builders. And we may say that we have 600 years old tradition from um, Imperial Arsenal shipyard. And currently, we have 84 active shipyards in Turkey. They are um, successfully completed so many interesting and innovative projects. And when we can look at our new building capacity, we can say that we have already completed the world's first projects in Turkey, the world's first zero emission battery powered tugs, LNG fueled ferries, and also a remotely operated vessel. This is also the world's first. And we have already completed naval ships, more than 100 ships. This means we are really experienced about complex ship types. And we are third in mega yacht building in all over the world. And for fishing vessels, we have already completed the world's first battery LNG fueled sailor trawlers and the world's largest live fish carriers. And in the past, we were the first in chemical tankers, but you know that there is a market demand. So nowadays, the chemical tankers are not very popular. Uh, but we can say that we, we are really good enough to um, build new building types, innovative ships, zero emission ships, and also very sophisticated conversions. Uh, Selin has already mentioned our new building capacities and also our repair and maintenance capacities. But when we look at the infrastructure, we have 33 floating docks in Turkey. 
and 11 dry docks. And we have the, one of the biggest floating docks all over the world in Turkey also. Our clients are mainly from Europe and also neighbor countries such as Russia. So we would like to improve our cooperation together. And I would like to give some examples of innovative and environmental friendly projects of Turkish shipbuilding industry. And one hybrid trader ferry, the world's first battery powered full electric hybrid tugboat, the first battery powered trawler, the world's first remote operated commercial vessel, the world's first LNG powered escort tug. And this is a very sophisticated ship which can provide an energy from ship to shore. And I saw one example in an African country, and the country mentioned that the capital city of electricity, 80%, has been supplied by this ship. So I think we have already completed more than 15, and they are, you can see in African countries. And the world's largest live fish carriers and mega yachts, very sophisticated ones. We, I have already mentioned that we are third in all over the world. And some shipyards are really um, experienced about repair and maintenance. It's a very good capacity for Turkey. And also one of our shipyards has already completed an innovative system. And also this, uh, this sophisticated system was uh, funded by Turkish research and innovation institution. And when we look at retrofit installations of ballast water treatment systems and scrubbers, uh, we have successfully delivered more than 130 scrubbers and more than 350 ballast water treatments. And I would like to show one example from repair works. And also we have already completed repair and conversion of offshore vessels. And I would like to give some examples or example projects from Turkey and Russia cooperation. Uh, Selin has also mentioned before, and one factory freezer trawler, crab catcher, and factory freezer stern trawler, row row vessels, and another row row vessel. And we can say that uh, by Turkish shipyards, we, ha we have a reliability in all over the world, and we have production quality and on-time delivery. And also, you, you can find authorized equipment suppliers and all classification societies in Turkey. And good co there is a good communication between clients and shipyards, and we have really good high-quality supply chain. Uh, as Gispir, we are really interested in cooperation with other NGOs. So we are a council member and active shipbuilding experts federation in South Asia, and we are a member of Sea Europe. And also from 2021, we are a member of Waterborne Technology Platform in order to follow up all R&D uh, initiatives in Europe and also uh, to follow up new tech technologies. We also follow up IMO and EU Green Deal approach. And also we know that you have really interesting projects in Russia, such as remote operated vessel. You have already submitted a paper in IMO and we have we, we found it really interesting, so we would like to cooperate with you. Um, thank you very much for your listening. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, we have finished our, our first session. Которые выступали представители администрации, представители профессиональных сообществ which is going to be represented by presentations from Russian companies. Uh, we are the speeches of Russian companies. And we are going to consider will be presented and we will discuss Russian companies, uh, the prospects of uh, at, uh, our companies the in the Russian market. market. So the first speaker is Alexander Troitsky, CEO of Nonius Engineering. Uh, hello, it's my pleasure to say that uh, the core of the company have graduated from our university and uh, Alexander is going to introduce innovative solutions that's already operational on Russian ships. Alexander, the floor is yours. 
Hello, colleagues. Merhaba. Alexander Let me speak English if, if, you, if I may. Alexander, please unmute your mic. Okay, can you hear me, colleagues? Yes, yes, you, you, we can hear you and we can listen. We we'll listen to you. Let me speak in English if you don't mind. All right. For colleagues to, uh, to, to, to um, be able to learn about our products. Just a second, please.
All right, we have watched a very interesting presentation from No News Engineering to uh, control the dredging operations. And now the floor goes to um, Nikolai Zykov, who is here today in our studio, commercial director of Cascade production company, to uh, submit his solutions to the market. Okay, the floor is yours, Nikolai. Hello, colleagues, Meraba, dear participants of the conference, we would like to uh, give information about our company. We are called Cascade. For more than 20 years, our company uh, is uh, doing for volumetric fire suppression. Our company is uh, has uh, trained more than 150 companies in the world to uh, uh, to uh, service the system. And uh, we have representatives from Turkey, from, from Europe, and from other companies. Uh, the aerosol firefighting systems uh, provide, can be installed on passenger ships, on any type of ships, type of ships, I would say. The certification system has been certified by the Russian Maritime Register, by the River Register of Russia, by the Italian Register, by International Maritime Register, Chinese Register. Uh, the most important thing is that the system of aerosol firefighting has a certification from Marine Equipment Directive Standard. And also we have that Norsky Veritas. And all equipment is in line with uh, the uh, the uh, uh, success of the system is that uh, it has advantages versus other types of systems for volumetric fire suppression, which is the price first from 20 to 60 percent uh, from uh, gas firefighting systems, the lack of uh, we don't need extra rooms or pipelines or we don't need any uh, pressure vessels and the system is fully safe for the crew and fully safe for the environment. So if you have a person in that aerosol room full of aerosol, he would not get any harm to his health and uh, no crew would uh, would uh, be damaged. So the uh, aerosol firefighting equipment is fully safe for any equipment located under um, 40 kilovolts of uh, current or voltage. The system is fully automated and uh, it's, uh, how to say, uh, fail-safe. The system is uh, very compact and light to carry. That defines its uh, advantage uh, when installing it on high-speed patrol boats. Now, Taiwan is going to retrofit and upgrade its navy and all patrol ships will be equipped by aerosol firefighting system made by Cascade Company, which I work for because of the weight, because of the volume, because of the speed of such crafts. You can see here the comparison of various types of uh, volumetric fire suppression systems and we can see that the difference is uh, by the well, dozen by dozen percent by weight the difference is very big too the uh, water mist system versus uh, inner gas systems too. That is very important to outfit ships and to install on um, high-speed crafts, yachts and the like. As I have mentioned, the system is fully safe for humans. So oxygen in the uh, room is not, how to say, bound and its concentration does not go down so we can breathe normally in the room full of aerosol at the same time all flames are suppressed and the flaming reaction is suppressed 
our company, our company produces the entire range of firefighting equipment, which is the aerosol generator of various types for various rooms, as well as electronics to control the color and sound alarm on the system start. So it's just a turnkey system for the entire customer. Customization is the there, and we have all the certificates if necessary we can install and maintain the system but usually installation is done by those representatives who have underwent training at our company and they could do that on a self-sustained basis in the regions based on their experience once again our equipment for aerosol firefighting has a european certification of the marine register that makes it possible to use it in all European classification vessels, not only Russian vessels. And thank you for the participation of that conference. The, we have good cooperation with uh, the Turkish companies for CLM 19 ferries. We have, we have supplied a number of sets of equipment and now we are producing sets for ships that are going to be built. Thank you very much, Tashikura Darim. We're happy to work with you. Thank you, Nikolai. Uh, you have mentioned an, an interesting example of a good commercial usage of uh, Russian firefighting systems with uh, technical advantages. So please note that. And um, Dear customers and dear engineer companies, please take a note of that. So the next Russian company that is going to be presented here is Polar SPB, represented by Andrei Birikov, department head. Hello, uh, colleagues, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Andrei, well. So first of all, our company belongs to uh, another mother company and just uh, we are operate in a different sector but still we were established in 2006 as an integrated supplier of radio navigation and communication systems of yokogawa and uh, other companies and we operate with russian shipyards um shipbuilding um, research institutes and and shipping companies six or seven years ago we have we began representing we began uh, representing turkish companies like uh, gear the sound this is on deck equipment cranes and other types of equipment Dedic hydraulic access fire this is the firefighting equipment as well as the cable and tech from, of Turkey. The company has uh, approvals from nearly all classification um, societies, maritime and river registers, and the advantage of our company in the Russian market is that we, is that majority of uh, shipping companies and ship owners operating in the Caspian Black Sea or the Mediterranean, the Bosporus, Dardanelle, and uh, they who have shipborne equipment of the above mentioned Turkish companies in Russia, of course, uh, and in St. Petersburg, we have a big network for maintenance and repair. And the same, same is true for Turkey and the Mediterranean good technical servicing capacities and high level of service the equipment from turkish companies that i have just mentioned proved to be good high quality of production and a quick response to any you know claims from customers so customers are happy and the runtime in winter or in autumn when 
ships uh, river sea go to the winter winter uh, mooring they have a chance to do the maintenance or preventive maintenance so we can provide these types of service and i would like to also say that uh, the company is 35 years old 15 years in russia and um, our major uh, office is in istanbul we could also uh, offer russian producers equipment for instance more sviaz automatica we also using that equipment partly in the radio navigation and communications projects mainly civilian markets and if you have any questions please go ahead um, thank you andre we got information from our integrated supplier polar shipboard equipment supplier and uh, this is also an integrator integrating company so thank you very much indeed the next representative of the russian side is the next representative of the russian side is dmitry gagarsky ceo of navgeo expert dmitry the floor is yours hello colleagues uh, thank you um, and uh, cure for the uh, invitation to um, speak up at that conference for cybersecurity at river and marine ships the uh, purpose of my presentation is to give information about the uh, practical cybersecurity measures in the merchant fleet international and the national requirements for security management systems Our company has been accredited for a check of equipment by cybersecurity, and we have special purpose software that makes it possible for us to define the load of networks and give recommendations to uh, uh, just outfit ships with special purpose equipment. Over the five years, there are five bigger or major documents at International Maritime Organization, International Committee, and International Association for Classification Societies that uh, regulate cybersecurity. And uh, we have to take that into account. The major idea for cyber attacks that uh, could happen in the world, unfortunately, is to introduce IT systems for theft of data from shipping companies, um, insertion into shipboarding equipment for control and um, uh, putting them out of operation. And in the final analysis, to use a ship as a threat for seaport equipment and lines of communications. The problems that we have encountered for a ship owner, uh, which ships are being built on shipyards, the problems are falling. First of all, many plans to uh, uh, build ships were conducted before the regulations had come into force and um, we need to identify risks at the initial before construction starts uh, risks for every ship and the possibility to change the regulations or any other special purpose equipment to be to outfit the vessels for international requirements up to 59 systems may be installed on, on a ship. They could be fewer, but the number is big. The cybersecurity regulations for navigation systems are also listed in the international IEC standard 61162-460. And the major bullet points for those documents are identification um, and definition and protection, response, restoration, and uh, of uh, systems in terms of 
in terms of any threats. So every line of activities should have uh, action plans, both on the ship and uh, for the shipping company. All systems are divided into three categories. And I would mention two and three categories. Category two are systems that potentially could uh, result in uh, um, adverse circumstances. And number three is a system that, uh, sorry, uh, situations that could result immediately to hazards. So we have to pay attention to that as specified in the regulations. Those um, actions have to be mentioned in the code and uh, all ships that are newly built, all acting active ships have to have such procedural activities and they have to be presented or submitted for supply since the 1st of January 2021 and January 1st of the of the 2021 all active ships have to be outfitted with similar similar regulations and the crew should know how to act in such circumstances all the information should be communicated to the management of services and shipping companies. Our company is offering solutions to uh, combat possible threats for GMSS signals, for jamming signals that could be like spoofing or jamming in the open sea. And we're also offering the control of ship positioning in, at, at sea and the only alternative way for a satellite based system is using astronomic measurements. For that, you have to change the uh, maritime astronomy subjects. You have to train on simulators. And we have provided that simulator. And uh, as, an as an offer, we, we suggest that we should combine efforts for a new electronic sextant to coordinate those efforts. Our second proposal is the risk um, management methodology and calculation of risk for every vessel in a shipping company. And our third offer is to automate uh, processes to control of cybersecurity of every shipboard equipment, every vessel separately to um, access to that information in the, in the cloud-based server for any shipping company for on any uh, watchdog interested in that. That slide is showing international organizations that we have worked with and the requirements uh, of which we comply. Teshikura Darim, thank you for your kind attention and uh, please welcome to cooperate with us. Um, thank you very much, Dmitri. A very interesting presentation after, well, very interesting presentation and you line of activities that um, the Russian side has a good experience and, uh, of course, uh, advantages. Next speaker uh, from the Starlit. No? no, 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 just five minutes, please. Let's wait for them. Let's have the second speaker. And before we switch over to the Turkish presentations, I would like to give a floor to uh, Dmitry Stoyanov, Head of Localization of uh, Central Research Institute course. Dmitry Olegovich would tell you not only on the state support Dmitry measures. Dmitry Stoyanov, the head that, of the Center uh, for Localization of Ship Equipment, GSC Central Research Institute course. In he Russia, will discuss the activities the of uh, shipbuilding of industry, industry of Russian Federation and uh, the, the uh, potential of Russian shipbuilding, Focusing uh, on the civil talking mainly about commercial shipbuilding. shipbuilding. Yours. Can you hear us, please? Dmitry Olegovich, can you hear us? I apologize, colleagues, I didn't switch on the microphone. Can you hear me now? Uh, good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you for this opportunity to speak here. I would like to describe the structure of Russian shipbuilding market, its perspectives and the prospects for localization in the Russian market, uh, defining the capacity of the market, 
and the rules for localization, the demands and requirements to import substitution activities. This slide represents the structure of Russian shipbuilding market. Currently, it consists of about 180 shipbuilding plants and about 300 companies of adjoining industry producing ships uh, components, ship repair, and other providing other services. Main localization of uh, shipbuilding is located in the European part of Russian Federation, but the Far East region, uh, and they will describe this a bit later, a large investment project is being generated. This is a shipbuilding complex called Zvizda. The demands of the Russian market are increasing each year. Traditionally, in Russia, we build from 100 to 140 vessels of average tonnage and uh, the class river, sea, fishing, uh, ships, research vessels, and other types. Until the year 2035, about 1,000 uh, ships are to be built. These are the prospects for the future. You can see the types of vessels are very different, and we mainly focus in our demands uh, um, in the uh, ships uh, for local inland river, sea routes and sea routes, but we also need a large tonnage vessels for uh, northern sea route operation. As I promised, I will briefly describe shipbuilding complex Zvizda. This is the largest investment project in Russian Federation in the shipbuilding industry. Currently, this complex construction is under completion stage, and about uh, 40 ships have been booked already, and 20 are under construction out of those. Uh, so the capacity 130 large uh, tonnage vessels. These are first of all Aframax type tankers, icebreaker leader, and uh, gas carriers. 15 units are already contracted, and 20 are optional. As we can see, the volume of construction works and the plans for construction of Zvizda. We understand that this is the largest uh, market for supply of components and materials. That's why colleagues from Turkish companies, manufacturers of ships' equipment and materials, we invite you to participate in this project. But there are some rules and demands to localization of this equipment. Here you can see the details of classes and types of vessels planned for the construction. Largest key customers, clients who ordered these vessels. And what else might be interesting to our Turkish friends? Participation in the project for localization in the Special Economic Zone project, which is called Bolshoi Kamin. This is the uh, shipbuilding in uh, focusing project. It's located not far from Zvizda complex in Vladivostok region. So all the infrastructure is being built now, uh, the warehousing facilities and the uh, construction facilities, so this there is a huge market uh, occurring for sales, for future sales. There will be a very high demand of equipment, uh, not only from Russian manufacturers, but also from foreign manufacturers. Why we are talking about Russian manufacturers? Because a lot of manufacturers of equipment are located in European part of Russian Federation and uh, they are located far, they are quite far away from Far East region, and that's why sometimes we need to have some assembling part, warehouses, for quick supply to such a big market as Zvizda project. That's why, dear colleagues, at the last slide there will be my contacts. 
uh, please contact us. Corporation of Development of Primorsky Region is responsible for development of this project. And currently, the list of future participants of this project is being generated, formed up. And the list of uh, components and items which will be demanded at Zvezda is also under formation now. A few words about another large investment project supported by the state. Uh, this is uh, this um, quarters assignment. Currently, the quarters are provided to the companies who take the obligation to build fishing vessels. As we can see, there are a few programs, general fishing development program, and few years ago they have generated another program, quotas for crabs catching, crab fishing boats. These boats, vessels, are to be built according to the quotas and should be built in compliance with the particular rules. Uh, for example, each vessel must have at least 40% of Russian components and materials and labor efforts. This vessel, this ship, is to be built in Russia as well. Otherwise, the quota will not be provided. Unfortunately, these are the rules of localization. So the quota might be wasted if these rules are not observed. Uh, thus, as we can see, a large demand is there for construction of fishing vessels. But once again, I would like to repeat that they shall be built on the territory of Russian Federation with quite a high percentage of Russian participation, components and local content. That's why Dear colleagues, manufacturers of specialized fishing equipment, fishing processing and ships equipment, we invite you to participate in this program. But unfortunately, direct supplies from foreign countries will not be prohibited, but they will not be demanded because there are requirements from the government to localization process. And here I would like to present uh, the draft law, which is uh, at the stage of signing by the government, will be signed this year by the government of Russian Federation. These are the rules for localization of construction for different types of vessels. Seventy-five types of vessels are described these are almost all vessels that exist. They are split on technological operations, design documentation rights, possession, materials and components. Then there is a division of 110 types of common ship equipment, which is used for all types of vessels, and 16 ship systems and 120 types of specialized equipment depending upon the type of the vessel, for example, whether it is a shipping, fishing vessel, scientific research ship. So a special equipment is to be supplied for a particular type of the vessel. Every equipment type is to achieve particular number of points from 5 to 500 depending upon importance of this equipment on board the ship and the points are distributed depending upon the uh, uh, its uh, significance so the vessels are grouped according to the types 75 types and the requirements are described to the point number. So these points are assigned only to the Russian manufactured uh, equipment and for construction of each vessel you have to collect from two up to three and a half thousand points. If we add up, if we sum up all the points, we will get 
the quantity from 7 to 7,500 points. So uh, maximum number of points is about 7,000. So until the year 2023, the level of localization will be regulated by the government and it will be approximately 40 percent. So to achieve this, you need to achieve uh, to collect about 3000 points. But in the future, this level of localization will be increasing. So that means that the government is interested in the construction of these ships in Russian Federation and uh, it's interested in the maximum content uh, uh, provided by the Russian manufacturers. Uh, so in this regard, we can see uh, the requirements to localization uh, will be uh, increased in time and we invite the manufacturers of ships equipment, developers of technologies, we invite uh, you to the territory of Russian Federation, uh, we invite you to, to participate in the localization projects here. On this slide I have presented the successful projects which have been already realized and currently acting and proved a very good performance in the market. Some of these projects were realized uh, in uh, joint cooperation with the Russian partners and uh, some partners like for example Yotun plant build it as a greenfield project. In Leningrad region the Minister of, uh, Ministry of Industry and Trade of Russian Federation have created localization center import substitution and localization center. So import substitution is for Russian companies and localization is for foreign companies. So we are actively cooperating with particular countries. First of all, Korea, because we are building the LNG carriers and Aframax type tankers on Zvezda plant and we are discussing localization issues with Korean companies right now and this uh, project will be realized in that Bolshoi Kamen special zone. We also invite uh, Turkish colleagues to discuss all these issues. We are ready to describe all the projects to you and describe all the rules and requirements how to participate in these projects, uh, our services are free of charge. We will provide you all the information and consult you. We will describe you the uh, measures of state support and we will describe you the uh, competition conditions here. We will uh, tell you, inform you on your products, what uh, kind of your, which of your products are demanded highly in our market and we will also provide all the relevant information required to the um, uh, potential customers and uh, we uh, already have uh, big experience and customers shipbuilding companies here we will describe all the projects and type of the ships which are demanded highly in our market so we suggest this type of localization this is the route that we suggest you to go on and we uh, traditionally follow this way, this scheme. We assess the market first of all, then we define the format of localization. Greenfield project is the most expensive type of cooperation. Uh, or, for example, cooperation with Russian technological partner in order to produce some equipment and uh, maybe perform some assembling on the site of Russian uh, partners um, using your components supplied from your country. Then we check the market, we do the market revision, uh, we plan the ways how to enter this market, we uh, uh, describe the project and we perform the full cycle of work and um, uh, we also can help you to sell the products distribution chains. Um, uh, uh, so the advantages of localization in the Russian Federation, low cost of production, we have similar situation to Turkey, uh, local currency ruble rate has gone down, so the expenses to produce the components uh, here inside our country is quite cheap now due to the financial situation and the expenses for electric energy 
all other expenses went down as well because all these uh, these expenses are in rubles. I would like to remind you that Russia is not only uh, Russian Federation, but also Eurasian Economic Union, which includes also Kazakhstan, Belarus, uh, Kyrgyzstan, and other countries. Low level of competition is another advantage comparing to European countries. Yes, this is true, because the production of ship uh, building components, equipment in Russia is has not been developing so actively in Russian Federation comparing to the world's development. That's why we are interested to saturate this market right now. So I would like to invite you once again to inspire you to cooperate with us and I would like to remind you that Russia is a huge market and we would like to develop it together with our foreign colleagues not only to maintain this market for current suppliers but also to develop this market through the localization on this slide you can see my contacts we are always happy to answer all the questions and support you thank you very much for your attention thank you so much dmitry the head of localization and import substitution of shipbuilding equipment working under the support of government of Russian Federation. I think this is a very important and interesting speech, not only for Russian customers, but also for Turkish colleagues from the point of view of long-term strategy formation for entering and participation in the projects in the Russian market. Thank you so much, Dmitry Alegovich. Now we would like to move on to the reports of our Turkish colleagues and the first speech Ersoy Salmas, business development and commercial director of one of the largest Turkish shipyards, Kuzey Star Shipyard. Please, you are welcome. Hello. Uh, good day to everyone. Uh, greetings from uh, Istanbul. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, thank you for the for this event, and uh, I would like to share. Uh, I would like to start uh, my presentation. I believe you, you can see the presentation. No, we cannot see your presentation now. We only uh, see the, your computer screen. Uh, Sorry, we have some technical problems, okay? Uh, I think so. I think that we are going to resolve them. Evet. Teşekkür. Okay, now I, I believe you can see now. Um, hayır, no, we cannot see it now. Oh. Strange. Could you please uh, push the uh, share my screen in the bottom side of that Zoom? panel and we will be I able actually, to see your presentation. I actually did it. Uh, let me just uh, just please uh, open the presentation, click it, double clip it. We only see your uh, your desktop now. Actually, I think there is a problem with the... Could you please stop your presentation now and start from the very beginning? Once again, okay. 
on, on the bottom, please uh, share, push the share my screen button on the bottom. So I, I'm doing a share screen. Actually, This is not the presentation. You have to start the presentation first and then share your screen. Just a second. Could you please uh, start your presentation first and then push share screen button. Oh, still, you cannot see. You can see. Okay, okay. So I believe everybody sees. Uh, so okay, uh, I will continue with the presentation. Sorry for the trouble. Uh, our uh, Kuzey Star Shipyard continues operation since uh, 1971. Uh, for the last uh, eight years, uh, we have uh, focused on new shipbuilding. Uh, it, currently, uh, we are continuing with the new shipbuilding and the repair projects at the same time. Uh, we have uh, all the necessary certification, but, but the most important one is the uh, certificate of uh, firm conformity. Uh, this is 7127 certification uh, from a Russian register uh, to be able to uh, proceed uh, with the new construction and the uh, repair projects. Uh, uh, our location is uh, almost, we can say, in the center of the uh, world. Uh, we are located in Istanbul and Tuzla Bay. Uh, our total uh, area is more than 100,000 uh, square meters. We have three slipways, a uh, total uh, closed uh, warehouse area of 30,000 square meters. We have uh, two floating dry docks. Uh, we have a total uh, 200,000 meters of uh, pier. Uh, we have 280 meters of seafront, and uh, we are able to accommodate uh, 12 vessel vessels at the same time in our shipyard. Uh, we have two shipyards, actually. One of them is in Yalova region. Uh, this is uh, 45,000 square meters area. We have one uh, wide uh, slipway, 56 meters wide. Uh, but our main focus is in uh, Tuzla shipyard. Currently, uh, we have more than 400 uh, numbers of personnel. This is a uh, Kuzey Star shipyard personnel. Uh, and uh, so subcontractors, we have a total number of 100, uh, 1,300 uh, contractors working daily in Kuzey Star Shipyard. Our activities are, uh, as I told you before, new building activities. Uh, we are uh, building a different type of vessels, but currently we are building car and railway ferries uh, for uh, Russian Federation, uh, Rosmar Port. Uh, we are doing repairs, uh, 120 ships uh, annually. We are doing uh, repairs, conversions, and uh, other special jobs like scrubber installations and ballast water treatment 
system installations. Uh, our advantages as Kuzey Star Shipyard is uh, one of them is the location. Uh, we are very close to international airports. Uh, we have the uh, loading and unloading uh, finished uh, products directly from our shipyard. It's a one-stop location. Uh, we are doing all the necessary uh, activities uh, within our uh, shipyard. The other advantage is the, our facilities. We have uh, quite a large uh, covered area and uh, we have blasting and painting warehouse, which is uh, one of the largest in uh, Tuzla area. We have uh, 12,000 tons of annual steel processing capacity, uh, three CNC cutting machines uh, able to cut uh, 24, 24 hours a day. We have a huge uh, machinery park, including transportations, heavy lifting, SPMTs, and we have our own barges uh, for the transportation from shipyard or, or to our shipyard from uh, the vicinity locations. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, our covered uh, blasting and painting warehouse divided into two uh, areas. Uh, half of it is the blasting area. The, the other half is the painting area. This is a, a fully automated, uh, climatized, uh, with a recycling system. We are uh, painting our blocks inside this warehouse and then uh, doing the erection on our slipway. Financial-wise, is also uh, we are uh, quite strength, strong. We uh, we have our own finance system. We can uh, provide finance to our uh, customers. Uh, very good uh, credibility within the uh, major banks of Turkey. Uh, our uh, quality control and uh, uh, health and safety uh, team is uh, very experienced and a uh, very strong team. Uh, we are able to uh, do all the tests with all the uh, implementations of international rules, of course, with the uh, Russian rules currently. Uh, some uh, photos uh, from our uh, construction yard, uh, some pictures from the blocks and uh, blocks being painted uh, within the a painting warehouse, uh, some more pictures. Uh, we have all, as I told you, the covered uh, warehouses, all the roofs are uh, retractable, uh, openable, and we can lift uh, and move the, the blocks uh, as we want. Some uh, barges operations. Uh, our uh, warehouses uh, under uh, doing uh, panel work and our construction. Uh, these are uh, our current uh, car and railway ferries that uh, we have been constructing for a uh, Rosemar port. Uh, the uh, first vessel, uh, Marshal Rokosowski, have been uh, uh, have, have been uh, moved from the slipway, uh, currently in the water. Second vessel, uh, General Chernyakovsky. We are planning to uh, launch uh, the vessel uh, within uh, May, within the, this coming month. Uh, these are uh, the first LNG-powered car and railway ferries for uh, Russian Federation, especially for the Baltic region. And also, uh, of course, the first LNG-powered uh, car and railway ferries that have been uh, built in Turkey. Uh, they are 200 meters uh, long uh, and uh, with the intensive uh, workforce, uh, we were able to uh, do the construction 
and uh, both of the vessels will be uh, delivered uh, within uh, this year, 2021. We have a, a very good cooperation uh, with our clients. We are uh, working with Rosmoport, uh, OSK, United Shipbuilding Corporation, uh, with the main designer, Marine Engineering Bureau. Uh, also, we have a very good cooperation with the trade rep representation of Russian Federation in uh, Turkish Republic, both in uh, Ankara offices and Istanbul offices. Uh, we would like to, uh, currently we are focusing on uh, signing some more projects and getting uh, some more contracts uh, in near future within 2021 and we will be happy to uh, announce them uh, within a couple of months. So, uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank, I would like to thank you uh, for this opportunity. Uh, Mr. Salmaz, the Kuzey Star is the biggest Turkish shipyard with good connections with Russian customers and producers. Very interesting presentation, given us a chance to know what are the capabilities of the Turkish Republic. The next speaker from the Turkish side is Mr. Mustafa Paksu, board member of Tersan Shipyard. The floor is yours. Um, hello, everyone. We can hear you, but we cannot see you. I'm sorry for that. Uh, this is, I'm the board member of Tarasan Shipyard. Uh, I would like to give some brief information about our shipyard. Uh, our capacity is, I, I actually, we established in 1993 in uh, Tuzla Bay, and we moved shipyard yellow area now we are in 23 land capacity is uh, 308 uh, permanent uh, workers also we are delivered uh, 15 tankers in uh, on the past around uh, between 2004 uh, between uh, 2008 also now we have built trawlers for the russian uh, russian, russian clients right now we already delivered our right now we have three more uh, projects for russia Actually, we have a really good cooperation with them and they're really satisfied from our shipyards. Also, uh, the name of the ship is Vladimir Livanov. Maybe you heard that uh, from Russian side. Uh, uh, also, I will give you some information about our shipyard. Actually, we have a lot of I mean, now we are talking about it with many different uh, long liners, uh, trawler vessel also. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, kind of vessel we are talking about with them. Uh, also in our references, now we are building uh, four cruise vessel for the Norwegian uh, government uh, now. And also we have uh, a good cooperation for Norwegian uh, fishing uh, sectors. Actually, now we are building also 15 uh, fishing vessel. It's different type of fishing vessel, of course. It's a factory trawler vessel, fish, uh, long liners, or uh, the live fish carriers. We have a different type of sectors. We, we are now building uh, ships. Also, uh, all our welders are certificated by DMVGL in our 
shipyard also this is a unique advantage for 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 the our clients and they're really satisfied for that um what i can see more now totally we are we are, we are delivered around 100 vessels to different uh, countries and now we have a uh, new project for the uh, 2023 we are already booked for uh, russian uh, clients norwegian clients also german canadian for the islands but mostly we are focused on right now for the fishing uh, fishing uh, sectors because we have a really good customer, especially from the Norwegian side. Also now our Russian friends, they are also very, uh, we have a really close relations with this last two years. And now we are really close to sign a new contract with the Russian uh, clients actually. Uh, that's it briefly actually. I'm really, thank you to listening, listening to me and also uh hope to see you again for new contract also new project for the future thank you very much if you have any question please если будут вопросы прошу вас thank you very much Lisa. <coughs> have a good it's a good example of cooperation with russian customers next speaker is uh, from the owner of CG Electric, Aben Saigi. The floor is yours. Mr. Saigi, please.
Thank you very much for this interesting presentation. The components of electric equipment are very important for the, from the point of view of the cost of the vessel. So I think your company has very good prospects in Russia because a lot of icebreakers and ice-class ve ice vessels uh, have a lot of electric equipment. Thank you so much. Next report, next speech, Daria Kekiva, the director on development and designing citizen design. We can see you. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen now. Сейчас я продемонстрирую. Thank you. We can see the presentation. You can see my presentation now. Yeah, I'm starting. Hi, everyone. I'm Daria Kekeva, director of Cheetah Design and Cheetah Marine Group of Companies. Cheetah is a marine interior company which have almost 25 years experience and team of interior architects, architects, and naval architects organization with high professional leaders with project managers. They are all skilled to build environmental friendly, functional, innovative, and unique projects. Our company based on Turkey, Yalova, and have services worldwide as well. We provide design consultancy for all type of vessels like passenger and cruise vessels, ferries, fishing vessels, conversion ships, with high quality materials and standards, also meeting budget works as per customer needs and satisfaction. We have design consultancy service steps with following preliminary planning, schematic design, and detailed design, also supporting with SketchUp, detailed 3D design, and virtual reality experiences. As design team, we have a word, humans are belong to nature. So our design scenarios actually starts from that point. With soft tones and color shims, warm and welcoming spaces, natural touch of materials and comfortable ergonomic furnitures, we are willing you to feel at home. Now on my presentation, I'm going to present some sample works of Cheetah Design, which are mostly our ongoing projects. First one is here, Havila History Time, Capella and Castor Cruises, built at Tarsan Shipyard. Also, we have a new contract and startup for the plus two sister cruise ships. Here we see Havila Deck 8 Deluxe Cabins on the screen, salon side view to the dining area target was from client to have calm, Minimalist design, also integrated design with entire ship interior. Here is a view from port side to entrance hall. Separator here planned to hide structural pillars also. Entrance built for welcome customers to feel like home. Salon side view from dining, as we see, fireplace combined with a stone wall cladded extrusion to give warm living room atmosphere. Bedroom designed to wrap up all your needs with an ergonomic plan. Calm with colors, live with live with textures. This is a view from window side here. And the view from bedroom door to dressing and bed unit entrance. We separate both function to give a tidy looking to the room. Bedroom here is a lockdown unit in this project. Bed top and shower is on both sides separated. Very generous wash basin with a modern look uh, design provided to fresh up your mornings. Open deck, balcony with jacuzzi space from Havila Design Intent. Settled down with stylish furnitures, rendered both day and both day and night view to give impression of cabin look as well. Second project to present is a Russian modern crab catcher. Owner is part of Northwest Fishing Consortium. Will be built at Krasnoya Sormova shipyard. We had a contract also for their five vessels with this design. Design aim is to same, uh, design aim is to same to give feeling people they are at home. So this kind of vessels have long-term voyages. They need to relax and feel surrounded with warm atmosphere. Mushroom view, donated with natural materials, soft transition with colors on main materials. 
Also, energetic contrast colors used on artificial objects, textiles, fresh and modern look with decorative LED wall lightings. Here you can see the view from restroom dining to food and beverage area. Also, separation of bed day room done by graphic etch C in a see-through window from mushroom to give uh, life to the day room. A view from day room, same design scenario and criteria followed in day room too, with addition of comfortable relaxed chairs and sofas. Light honeycomb materials are used for to avoid messy weight on uh, ship structure. Opposite view of uh, day room with artificial wall and wall light to give calm atmosphere too. Another view from captain's room to increase the functionality, we use modular furniture for all cabin designs. Captain cabin uh, living room space view with uh, repeating design intent to entire ship. Captain cabin bedroom with our modeling, modular line family furniture here presented. Third and last project to present is a GFK Norwegian modern fishing trawler ship, which will be built at Tarsan Shipyard 2. We are on tender stage for that project and hopefully awarded soon. Fishing vessel crew area spending more of their time inside the ship. So it is important to ensure spaces are safe and environmental in and the world living. Especially public spaces are designed for their comfort relaxation and vitality. The project, as it, is, as it is on schematic design stage, design intent is to set up for transition with public living transparent and uh, wide open spaces. Light separation panels between lounge and dining spaces, it is, uh, it is supported with contrast lighty colors of furniture and natural materials and textiles. We gave more energetic dynamic feel to mushroom area for the feet human even from soul with natural touch of colors on textiles. Another view from mushroom through food and beverage bar as design scenario here we can see the transparency and uh, light well rich spaces. Modern design of captain room on this vessel room is specially planned for uh, like home living dining and living and working stations are well divided here, more technological, minimal, and modern look. Furniture with functionally designed can serve to all your needs. Here, a living room separated from workstation with low wall to give tidy, isolated living to captain. All materials are follows entire harmony of design here. A view from entrance of captain cabin, dining space plant aside, and separated with a graphic edge plus and a warm feeling with a fireplace. Mostly corridors are boring spaces, tidy, narrow, tight, narrow, and simple. We believe that idea can be breakable and corridors can be become amazing for to be discovered. Use of the corponets, different ceiling lines, line types, and contrast colors and artificial works and lighting fixtures can enough to achieve this goal, we believe. As we said in the beginning of presentation, humans are belongs to nature. So we adopted the principle to amaze our customers with their natural living criteria. Thank you for your attendance and thank you for your precious time. This is end of my presentation. Wish that you like my presentation. I would be pleased to receive your interviews requests for more detailed information. Thank you very much, Daria. This was interesting report. Uh, the uh, seaman work is really difficult and it's really important to relax, not only on shore, but at sea, of course. And on the other hand, Russia within last 60 years, for the first time last year, passengers vessel was delivered in Russia for the first time and interior the design of the interiors are very important for passengers, vessels, which we have just recently started constructing in Russia. Thank you very much. I'm sure the products of your company 
will be highly demanded in the Russian market. A completing report of Turkish side, Mr. Zamanov, Fokhradin, Deputy General Director on Projects, Epic Company. Uh, you're welcome, Mr. Zamanov. Can you hear us, Mr. Fakhradin? While Turkish side is preparing for the next report, then I would like to say, I would like to remind that, one second, Fakhradin. Mr. Fakhradin Zamanov, Deputy Director General on Project Company Epic. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you for inviting our young company to this platform. I would like to share some information about our new company. It's quite young and it was established in 2018. I hope you can see the presentation now. EPIC was created in 2018 in October in Istanbul. The main strategy, no sound, there is no sound, the translation cannot be rendered. This is interpreter. Small technical delay. Well, unfortunately, for Hradin Zamanov is off. I would like to remind twenty first on twenty fourth of February. Uh, the um, exhibition there will be a Neva exhibition in St. Petersburg. And now I would like to give a floor to our official representative in Turkey, Alihan Havuz. You can turn to him on any questions with regard to Neva exhibition participation. Alihan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear and see you. Uh, can you see the presentation? No, not yet. Not yet? We can see just you. Just me? Okay. No presentation so far on the screen. At the moment, can you see? Can you see? I suggest. Yes, we can see it now. Okay, let's go. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to greet all the participants of this event. My name is uh, Alian Havuz, and uh, I am the official representative of uh, NEVA 2021 International Maritime Exhibition and Conference in Turkey. Uh, NEVA is a leading commercial maritime exhibition in the Eastern uh, Europe and the former Soviet republics. The exhibition showcases achievement and uh, trends in the development, manufacture, 
maintenance and modernization of marine and river facilities. Uh, NEVA exhibition has been held for 30 years and it is recognized to be the main B2B platform uh, for the international companies to uh, access and benefit from uh, the opportunity of Russian maritime industry. NEVA encourages an active dialogue among all the largest shipbuilding companies of the Russian Federation and foreign manufacturers, all those who are engaged in maritime services shipping. Uh, there, is a, there is a lack of uh, live communication and NEVA exhibition provides a unique opportunity to conduct personal meetings with colleagues and partners to exchange uh, new knowledge, uh, show new projects, new materials, conclude new contacts. Uh, as you can see, in, uh, the uh, NEVA traditional, traditionally uh, is uh, supported with uh, official authorities like the Minister of Transport of the Russian Federation, Minister of Industry and Trade of Russian Federation, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation and the other uh, NGOs. Uh, and uh, let us remember, in NEVA uh, 2019, there was uh, 25,000 visitors uh, and 600 exhibitors from uh, all over the world. And uh, NEVA, NEVA exhibition is held for uh, held every two years. The past exhibition took in place uh, in Expo Forum and was attended by almost 25,000 visitors. Among the key spe uh, specialists, uh, there were top, of, uh, top and senior managers, directors of uh, key industries, uh, players, port service representatives, ship agents, designers, and constructions, uh, captains and ship owners, development directors, engineers, project managers, and sales managers. So as you can see in uh, 2019 in uh, at NEVA, there, there were uh, 654 exhibitors. Uh, 243 exhibitors were foreigners and 411 uh, was Russian ex exhibitors. There were seven national pavilions in regarding and uh, in uh, 2019 there were uh, Stand Turkish National Pavilion Standard, and uh, in 2021 uh, we are uh, waiting our Turkish National Pavilion as well at the exhibition. So you can see the numbers. Uh, Neva is gr growing uh, organization uh, year year by year. So it was in 2015. It was uh, 30 thousand. 500 uh, square meters, but at, at this time it is uh, uh, in 2019 there was 30,000 square meters. Sure. Uh, shipbuilding in Russia uh, substantially depends on the purchase of foreign equipment and components. Subsequently, more than uh, 200 foreign companies participated in the exhibition. There were uh, participants from 29 countries such as uh, China, Germany, Holland, Norway, Turkey, Republic of Korea, Singapore, Belgium, UK, Greece, Italy, Finland, and the others. And uh, let me remember you that uh, in the in these pandemic days in Expo Forum, uh, there will be um, prepared a uh, safe and security exhibitions. Expo Forum will provide all the necessary, necessary preventive safety measures for event participants and visitors, such as contactless online registration in advance, social dis distance layout, personal protection equipment, uh, regular cleaning, temperature screening, increased medical services, navigation during events with consideration of the number of people in the uh, premises, organization of transport with additional safety measures. 
Uh, during the NEVA 2019, uh, the driver arranged the cutting edge formats for uh, Congress and exhibition activities, so such as, as special areas for presentation, signing agreements, and business communication. Uh, we are also developing a concept for a, a new services in uh, NEVA 2021 for exhibitors and visitors the business contact center, which we allow to schedule meetings with particular companies. Also, as, as you know, from the November of 2020, we, uh, we are making uh, online conferences with the um, countries. Uh, and at the moment with Turkey, we are doing uh, com online conference uh, before the NEVA 2021 to uh, collaborate with industry unions and associations, uh, maritime online conferences. So at the moment in NEVA 2021, uh, we have moved more than uh, 800, 850% of uh, area. So it, it, uh, we have not much uh, place to make uh, uh, booking new new book, booking uh, the ex there are 25 percent of new exhibitors and uh, more than uh, 50 uh, industry partners so what i would like to say say for the uh, turkish audience so uh never 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 is a great opportunity to participate in shipping maritime exhibition in Russia because uh, the the majority the key, the key players will be at the at the exhibition and it is the uh, key of uh, key key of the Russian market to see everyone who who, who is a decision maker at uh, at Nava. So for the Russian audience, I would like to say that there is great opportunity to grow your business with the Turkish companies in Russia. So in Turkey, uh, companies are uh, working uh, very, uh, very flexible, very good quality. You, you, you can uh, make a good timing uh, with the Turkish uh, companies for, for Russian market. So uh, Turkish companies are fast and and it, it is great opportunity to work and collaborate uh, with Turkish companies to grow your business. So I would like to say to Turkish audience that in, in, in Russia, uh, in Russian Federation, there is a great uh, opportunity to make new, new uh, shipbuilding projects according to the uh, numbers uh, until 20, 2030 uh, russia russia is planning to build uh, 406 vessels and uh, every year uh, russia is going to, going to buy some equipment uh, like uh, about 7 billion uh, components per year. It's uh, it's like six uh, six units, six six hundred uh, items. Like list of the uh, power plants, deck equipment for vessels operating in Arctic conditions, marine uh, diesel engines and pumps, uh, compressors and gas truck blowers, uh, marine electric equipment, marine features and fuel injection equipments, uh, controls for controllable pitch propellers, and so on. Uh, and as you see in NEVA, in, uh, we will have some sessions for uh, uh, conferences. So it's uh, 21st September, you can uh, listen Strategies Investment International Cooperation in uh, September 2022, uh, Global Trans Maritime Technology in Innovation in R Russian Shipbuilding Science, and 2030 uh, September Modernization of Production Facilities, Localization, uh, Diversification. So if you are interested, we can uh, also provide 
with culture program and travel services for coming uh, Petersburg in Russia. So if if you are interested, I would like to give more detailed uh, information for Neva. Thank you, thank you for watching. Teşekkürlerim, Alihan. We have uh, pretty much um, interesting an announcement about the upcoming exhibition. September is the best time in St. Petersburg. So let's have another attempt to listen to Mr. Zamanov's presentation, Deputy CEO for Projects of EPIC. Mr. Zamanov, the floor is yours. Hello, colleagues. Uh, sorry for having issues, uh, for communication issues. I'm going to continue my presentation with your permission. Can you see it? Yes, sir, we can see it. Good. Let me continue. Our company has opted for a strategy to introduce... You don't hear me? Hey, strange. Let me unmute or something. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Good. Our company has opted for a strategy to... Uh, introduce into the shipbuilding market a few points. The first line of activities is to be the leading EPC contractor company, a company developing the uh, engineering solutions plus support and supply chain management as well as the construction activities support. The second line of activities is the quality control system uh, that would be in line with international standards and with customer standards in line with its legislation of the country. An example is uh, that we deliver contracts for a few Russian companies and they have their own standards and we, we comply with those standards. The third line of activities is that we could offer services for project management on behalf of a customer, for instance, a Russian customer has uh, a contract in Turkey, we can support it on behalf of that customer to uh, accept works and so on. Number four is um, multidisciplinary approach. What does it mean? This is our advantage because we could do um, a few works simultaneously at different shipyards, new construction, on one yard, on the second yard, we can convert it and repair on the third yard. And we could do that simultaneously and controlled at the same time. Line five of our activities is quick response and flexible response of equipment and logistical supply using advantages of Turkey, because Turkey could get better prices, much cheaper prices for Russia. We have already tested that and uh, we could um, just contact with uh, Western companies. We can get better offers and give you good value for the money. And the last but not least is that uh, we have good engineering solutions to uh, uh, create new types of ships with a better competitive edge and innovations. Our closest partner dealing with uh, um, engineering processes is Dengue Technology, set up in 1997 with 160 ship conversion and construction projects. The company has been dealing with the ER and UR types of, of ships that we develop, and uh, it is our major partner for design and the like. Our competitive edge here is that we could do work simultaneously at different shipyards. We don't have extra costs for those shipyards and we're flexible in optimization and modernization. A good example is a ship from Inte Group that we have developed works. This is a U-type uh, vessel with some advantages and uh, uh, certain shipbuilding company in Russia was interested in that project and we're now in the course of negotiations with those guys to uh, to start construction of such vessels. What are the plans to develop? 
now the idea is to get a feedback from Camilla and LF for that type of ship to optimize it and to remove any problems or to modernize it. Secondly, the idea is to work out with Dengue technologies to implement the hydrogen-based and methanol-based technologies in vessel constructions. As we know, there is a state program to support hydrogen fuel and we would like to be part of that program because we are experts on that. What else can we offer to Russian co colleagues? You can use our capacity. Um, we build 18 times per year, 18 months per year, 24 seven at different shipyards and we can manage them simultaneously. And we could offer our Turkish, uh, sorry, trade partner to provide cheaper offers. In terms of finance, our company, um, we are partners of Turex in Bank, supporting experts. We are in the course of negotiations to finance project. We also offer bank guarantees to our customers. We work on the letter of credit basis and we have hedging instruments. So if customers if the contract may be, can be made in rubles and we, we can use our hedging instruments to remove any risks, including any currency prob, uh, FX rate to use hedging forwards for uh, buying steel or so on. And just a few words, I would like to show you a little video on our new construction, just a short video and that would be my presentation. There is no video yet. Don't you see my video? No, not yet. Yes, just a second. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Khradin. That was a very interesting report about new financial about new financial and technological tools that will be interesting for Russian customers and Russian shipbuilding industry. Thank you very much. Once again, we are completing our conference. We've covered our main agenda and um, to finalize this conference, I would like to make a small presentation and I hope it will help 
to generate a long-term strategy for our partners and will be interesting as well for Russian shipbuilders. Please. This presentation is a modern overview of commercial shipbuilding in Russian Federation. Partially, it might explain the drop of cargo turnover, trade turnover from Turkey. It'll be downloaded. Online conference has its specific features, but while there is a pause, I would like to describe, to explain to all our participants that upon the completion of the conference on our website, you will have a chance to read all the materials from this conference and to get all the contacts of all the speakers who participated in this event. I hope that until the end of pandemic, we will learn how to work with these online conferences and presentations. Thank you so much. So, as I already announced before we are talking about civil uh, commercial shipbuilding in Russian Federation within last year 2020 the agency Clarkson Research has rated Russia as a third country on the growth of commercial shipbuilding the production of commercial vessels in Russia achieved 8060 860,000 uh, tons, and this is more than China. Within the last four years, as you can see, the increase of volumes of commercial shipbuilding is a, achieved a triple increase. It has increased three times. Now, in the largest shipbuilding company of Russian Federation, United Shipbuilding Corporation, in the year 2020, the share of commercial shipbuilding achieved 21%, and about five years ago, it was less than 10%. The main customers of shipbuilding of Russian Federation can be split on two major groups, state orders, governmental orders are mainly from Rosmoreg Flot. This is the federal agency and Rosmosport, Rosmorport, who are responsible for water routes, ports, water zones, and own possessed diesel icebreakers. Mosport Slushba is responsible for rescue search and rescue operations, federal unitary company Rosatom Flot, according to our law, has is uh, possessing the nuclear powered vessels and governmental state belonging research vessels, Ros Gidremet, Russian Academy of Science, and Ros Rybalostva are the owners of those vessels. The major part of the market uh, also belongs to the private owners. Uh, these are the companies, first of all, dealing with transportation services in the local inland uh, waterways. Uh, company Sovcom Flot is quite a big company, which has more than 150 vessels, mainly tankers and uh, gas carriers and uh, oil and gas producing companies also have their fleet and the, some of those vessels are private belonged. Here we can see the icebreakers. Within five, within last five years they were built in the Russian Federation. These are mainly uh, 21900, 
22600, Viktor Chernamyrdin, the icebreaker which is going through the ice trials in Arctic right now. A few icebreakers for Gazprom Neft and other oil producing companies and one small icebreaker Ilya Muromets for Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. Nuclear powered vessels. This is the second generation of nuclear vessels are dismissed, n not in operation any longer. On the other hand, uh, the Northern Sea route uh, turnover is increasing and we need new icebreakers. Currently, they are building for icebreakers 22 to, to zero and one of them was already delivered and went through the ice trials and started regular operation in arctic zone technical project of leader icebreaker has been completed 120 megawatt icebreaker the biggest in the world and the contract for its construction was signed on Zvizda plant that was described by Dmitry Stoyanov in his presentation just a second, I will try to switch over. Next product line, which is under construction in Russian Federation, rescue vessels. They all belong to Marine Rescue Service, about 100 vessels. These vessels have large body displacement range uh, from 7 megawatt ice category icebreaker 6 to small vessels for elimination of oil splits in the water zones in the harbor zones Can we switch over manually? Just a second. Small technical problems, sorry. Next product line, which is intensively de developing in Russian Federation as and is under construction in Russian Federation and abroad. Dredging vessels and uh, escorting vessels. These, the uh, total length of waterways in Russian Federation is more than 100,000 kilometers and the annual dredging volume in these in waterways and harbor zones up to 30 millions of cubic meters. Large product line are the vessels for river ways, inland waterways and the uh, uh, a lot of those vessels are built uh, in uh, Turkey. These are uh, bulkers, tankers, mixed uh, river and river sea vessels. As I already described in my speech before, within the last 60 years, Russian Federation built a cruise river class vessel for the first time. Three 100 passengers is the passengers capacity and it was commissioned last year and uh, it was launched last year as well just a second within uh, this conference we have mentioned many times that due to governmental support The construction of fishing vessels is developing quite uh, dynamically. 
we have a lot of old fishing vessels and uh, intensive updating, renewal of such uh, fleet is going on and we have uh, a lot of uh, Russian projects uh, commissioned and foreign projects delivered in our in the market high speed fleet is also developing in the Russian Federation and you know that the Russian Federation is large country and a lot uh, the major part of its territory is located in uh, severe harsh climatic conditions that's why air cushion hovercrafts uh, and hydrofoils are very important uh, within last few years, we dedicate a lot of attention to renewal, updating of scientific research fleet. Uh, these vessels work in Arctic region. Academic Tryoshnikov was delivered in 2014, and they are regularly performing expeditions in Arctic and Antarctic region. And recently, in the Admiralty, they have launched a unique floating station which is called the Northern Pole. Roskidramet is the agency that ordered this vessel. In 2020, the growth for, uh, uh, of private fleet, private owned vessels has started, but it's quite slow and we hope these small boats and yachts uh, will be built and the equipment will be supplied for such vessels uh, from other countries. Here we have enumerated briefly the measures of state support from the government of Russian Federation. This is, first of all, the recycling grant. These are subsidies for the construction of fission vessels. These are quarters under keel that were mentioned today and they support extensively the leasing of transport vessels, passengers and cargo. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like to complete our conference with the following words. Dear participants of the conference from Russian and Turkish side, our conference has covered its agenda. We have exchanged our opinions on the current cooperation and we have reviewed the examples of mutually beneficial cooperation of our country, Russian and Turkish companies presented their products and let's hope that uh, the ship owners will, Russian ship owners will continue placing orders in the Turkish shipyards and the uh, Turkish companies will provide the products uh, and uh, we will continue building vessels together. Thank you very much. We complete our conference on this. Thank you very much.